Committee on Eleven. Roll call. Chair Bussey? Here. Alder Holmquist? Mr. Drushel? Here. Ms. Devenish? Here. Mr. Ganser? Mr. Stein? Here. Mr. Kugel is excused. Mr. Homburg? Here. This is just the safety issue. Number one, either they're backing out into traffic or um, we're loading them out onto the street with forklifts and stuff like that. Um, the other problem is uh, I believe WPS has gotten it approved that there's going to be no parking signs installed uh, on our side of Mangrove, which that's where most of our customers park now when they have trucks and trailers is right there in front of our store. So when those signs get put up, then they'll have no choice but to pull into our parking lot, which will force them to back out into the, uh, into the street. So our, our idea was we have a current parking pad that we sometimes display equipment on or otherwise some pickup trucks will park on there. Um, our idea was to kind of just continue that pad um, to the south and connect it to our existing loading dock concrete. Um, So our thought was that's the pad that's existing right now. Our thought was to just continue that pad with the, ex the trees that are there would stay. And then uh, there was some concern about our underground water retention um, system. And there's a manhole um, up farther in the grass closer to the loading docks. We would actually turn and angle that down towards the, uh, the cutout in the, in the curb. Uh, so we wouldn't have to move any of the trees and we would not mess with the existing manhole. So we would not disturb any of that. But that's our thought would be just to continue this concrete over to our loading dock and that would allow for pickup trucks to pull in our existing uh, entrance, uh, park on this while we do business inside and load them up and then when they leave they can just continue down and exit out our loading dock um, road entrance. equipment uh, and supply of the building and site were constructed in 2012. The plan commission approved the site plan and the zoning permit associated with it at a green space percentage of 14% and that is less than the goal that's usually um, required of 30% green space on, on the site. So because this is an additional reduction of that already low green space on the site, it's coming here to plan commission for consideration. And Jeff um, mentioned the stormwater detention basins that need to be considered there that are buried underneath the green space in front of the building. And staff's recommendation is for approval with the one condition regarding those stormwater basins. Thank you. Um, commission members, comments? Mr. Amber? Well, we have a site that's pretty short on green space to begin with. And, and you know, this would be an area where we really don't want to reduce it, but on the other hand, I'm, I'm very happy they've been so successful and you're having some logistics problems in the rear of your yard. I understand that. And I think where we have a burden to make something work is the fact that we're taking all parking off that road. When we approve this, we talk about the fact that trucks and trailers can pull right along that curb. So I, so I think we're creating a bit of a burden as a city by, by taking that action. So although I don't think it's great to take off half the grass that got left off the front, I think it's an appropriate solution. I think the stamp colored concrete, if someone hasn't seen it, it's great down there. They have so many examples of different techniques and things that can do there. It's really 
uh, it's nice and, and this little variance. I, I do think by taking up some more, there's a couple areas where you could add a little landscape. Your well landscape, I think there's a couple of pieces to go in. One area might be right back here where all your cars back in and you've got some stones to keep them from going in there, but it's really just grass. Yeah. And I don't know if that might be an area where you can get a couple canopy trees in there or, or something like that. I think that'd be easy for you to maintain a little of shrubs or something. And then the one other place I think of is if you look at the front of your building, this is the piece of paper you're talking about. Dad, you've got one, two, three trees right here for some reason. It's just like half and they would really see the throw that out and put one more in there. So my suggestion might be something along those lines. Just to get some more points in there since we're, we're getting so low on the green space. And, and uh, I look at it, look at it, I can't think of a better solution than what's being proposed. I, I think the condition on the ADS, we've got the letter they talk. I, I read some of their further communications that Sonia forwarded us. And you need to make sure you have a graduate base before you do it, and then you have a proper back over that. We'll take a look at that. Yeah, the rep and so he's on site when we install this, so he'll be more than happy to come back out. Just check on it. Thanks. Thank you. Any other comments? Yeah. I, I just want to note, uh, you've been a wonderful addition to the neighborhood, and your aesthetic concerns are very much appreciated in a neighborhood where it's kind of weak. It's an old industrial park, and it, and it shows, and your place looks great. Thank you. So if you need more cement, you need more cement. Any further discussion or is there a motion? Move approval condition along the new driveway payments located over buried stormwater detention chambers and therefore the applicants shall install an appropriate payment section above the chambers to adequately protect the system from the anticipated traffic loads. And then condition two, the additional landscaping is discussed with final approval by staff. Is there a second? Second. Stromberg. I reworded the condition a little bit, Sonia, since we've gotten further information from ADS, and, and I worded it such that what they anticipate for loads, they need to make sure that they have the right structures in there for that. I, I don't want to say it has to be a good pickup with you, it's a 30,000 pound I mean, that's a good Further discussions? Seeing none, I'll vote in favor say aye. 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 Congratulations. Looking Thank you. Success. Thank you for. Um, 6C, consideration of action on request by the pizza oven represented by owner Greg Ewald. For approval of two wall sign permits and a landscape ground sign permit for the pizza oven restaurant 5511 and on the drive. Um, yeah, you know, it, it was... Could you get for the record uh, name and address? Oh, sure. Um, Alan Darko, uh, 931 Harrington Drive. Um, uh, you know, we wanted to do the two signs. Um, just mainly, there were two signs there already. Um, you know, it was... Um, it's technically, you know, it has the two addresses. Um, so the street sign, you know, I think is very... Um, very valuable for us. I think it's good for visibility. And, um, you know, in the strip mall, I think that's one of the best visible spots. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we're just open for if you guys have questions, um, anything for that. So, well, if you move on to consideration section, if you just want to hang there, sure. some questions, that would be good. Sonia? This request is here before the Plan Commission because it's a signed permit request that accompanied a need for a zoning permit. Um, so outlined in, this, in the sign code, this requires plan commission approval. And the question that um, you, you touched on is that there are two cabinet signs and one of them is proposed to be filled with the pizza oven and one is to be filled with the sauce bar. And uh, I'd like the plan commission to discuss whether this is two signs for one business or if it would be appropriate to approve two signs because um, there are two separate entrances, two separate addresses, and there are two existing cabinet signs already on the building. Okay, thank you. Commission members, discussion, comments? 
Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Chris. I, I recall when we approved this for Mike Besser as we had a discussion on the double cabinet signs. They were there in the east around a couple of different things that we talked about the fact that it is two separate units with two separate entrances. I think it was a little weaker to approve it for him than it is for this use because this use actually, the way I understand it, is going to operate quasi sports bar from the one half and then the restaurant in the other half is that correct that is correct sir and that's why there's two different names on the sign so, so this is probably less of a stretch than we originally approved it in my opinion um so, so I, I i think it's appropriate i think we justified it the first time that was two separate units with two separate addresses and two separate entrances and the owner wanted to keep the existing cabinet signs they, the way they were so if something happened in the future he had that ability to split it up Answer. So these are all existing cabinets, yes. from what I saw, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just make sure that actually that's it. I just wanted to make sure of that. Any other discussion? Well, I I have to say I agree with staff's comment. Uh, second condition: she's recommending the landscape around the ground site must be maintained in accordance with the previously approved landscape ground site permit. It's a little weak there right now for the landscaping. I'm, I'm sure there's a little more approved than what survived, and probably a lot of some of the drought or whatever. But I, I pay some attention. I'm sure Sony has a copy of what was approved. I pay some attention to the base of the sign, the landscaping, get back up whether it's animals or, or whatever. I take a look at that. Absolutely. Further discussion? Is there a motion? Move approval of conditions of recommended by staff and findings of that recommended by staff. Sign up. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, hopefully, hopefully in August. Okay. We're trying to we're trying to keep it in August, you know. I'm just really don't want to eat too much of a month, you know, another month. Be before the 30th, I hear there's a game that night. Yep, yep, we're, we're trying, we're, we're coming along, we're making a lot of progress. So okay. Hopefully, we'll get it in August. That's cool. Cross your fingers. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Um, 6D consideration of action. On request by a G Jacob Anderson, now the Park and Recreation Director, for approval of one new landscape ground sign at each of the following parks Mega Park, Arrowhead Park, Grand Park, and Washington Park. Sonia? Um, I know Mr. Anderson is coming to this. If, do we want to move on to E? Let's move on to E. Um, review of city wayfinding sign package for features of signs and destinations. Adam, you take over there? Yeah, I am. Okay. Um, <coughs> during the uh, planning of the Monona Drive reconstruction, the idea of replacing these signs by staff and Eventually, the mayor um, came up. We, we do have sporadically some wayfinding signage through the community. We thought a more thorough and detailed um, plan was needed. Uh, we also thought something that would um, match uh, our current logo and, and colors of the community would be uh, appropriate. What you have in front of you is a package of you know, not to scale and signage. Uh, again, the, this signage is not designed according to what will be the final product. The design is currently out to uh, RFP with several sign companies showing interest in, in this uh, project. I believe it's August 15th is the, uh, August 18th is, is the deadline for the, um, proposals from the various sign companies um, so what we're looking for from this group is more of comments and or suggestions on both the destination and the location of the signage at this point in time the final designs or the draft designs will come to this group also at a later date then one final note is that there are 33 signs listed on here and that might be a little bit too much um, for the community, but it would, this represents the maximum number of signs that would pretty much be possible for the wayfinding sign package. And it was reviewed once by the CDA, um, a few minor changes that probably need to be refined, and one of those is, I think it's on sign number two, it's shown on the bottom left corner there where it says 
I think it says entering Monona Waterfront District. Um, that sign was recommended um, by a member at the CDA because it appeared on the previous sign as you're coming along that curve on Broadway and then when you arrive in what would be the Waterfront District, it's no longer identified. So um, addressing it in some way, I don't think this is the best possible way to do that, but one comment from the CDA there was incorporated. Um, we'd like to start. Brian, I don't pick on you. Okay. Pick on you. So I've, I've got a lot of notes and it's just feedback at this point, not necessarily suggestions. The, the first one after looking through all of this was the idea of a lot of the signs that exist in the community, not necessarily wayfinding signs, will they be actively cataloged and or removed if inappropriate? For example, we have some signs that are completely sun bleached out that are we going to be yanking those at the same time? Is yes. Possible. Um, one of, so I'll just walk through what I have and people can chime in if, if they have something to add. Uh, when I looked at the entry in the, the waterfront district, it got me thinking that there were some additional signs in here that talked about some of the other districts were indicated on the signs. And a question I had was anything that was in the Monona Drive business district, which was labeled and identified somewhere, should all those signs that exist there have an, some type of indicator knowing that you're in that location for all the three different districts that are identified? So that was one question uh, that came up repeatedly for me on these. On item number two, the Uh, let's skip that one. That one didn't make sense to me. So, item number three. <coughs> I'm confused of why we would have Winnipeg Trail boat launch from Broadway sending people down bridge. It's can, I, can I interrupt for a second? Yeah. Um, and Brian, tell me if you yeah. want to continue. No. Um, I guess I'd like to go through and list out what the destinations are supposed to be because I think that will start to answer a lot of the questions. My experience with doing signage, and to me, wayfinding is an entire package. It's the look of these, it's the color, it's the location, it's the lighting, it's everything else that's happening. Signage itself is not wayfinding, it's part of a whole package. But um, to me, we need to de determine exactly what the destinations are then we need to chart the best routes or um, arteries that we want people to get there. And that's not necessarily, I don't feel, going through all the residential streets unless we're encouraging a lot more traffic to come through the residences. So um, to me, the main artery is Monona Drive, and then how do we want to get off of that? So then our signage should get us to those locations, and then the signage needs to get us back out to the main artery. So it would be helpful to me if we start with number one and just list out or all agree on what are the destinations because I'm confused by some of the destinations that are listed. The other point just before we go on that I want to bring up is I really feel these signs need to apply to the same um, guidelines that we insist that our applicants are held to and that is uh, the sign that's up there right now is a good example. There is way too much information on that sign. A car going past cannot possibly read all that information. So we've just negated the value of the sign. So I think we really need to take a look and define exactly what those destinations are. We have a chart of just, I know that we have pictures with all those pictures. Is there a chart here of just the yeah. Oh, if I could make a recommendation, are there are there some destinations that this body does not agree with? That uh, this has gone through extensive work at the staff level in terms of um, destinations that individuals would be coming to the community for. So, I uh, if there's some that aren't on there, I guess I'd like to hear that because I I would think there'd be less of them than ones that should be on there. I, I um, to me, some of the like business districts and waterfront districts, 
don't mean anything to me. If I'm interested in a business, I know I'm, I'm, I know the name of the business that I'm looking for, and I'll find the address. To me, this um, if I'm coming from out of town and there's a sporting event or a soccer game and I can't find the park, um, but to go to a business district, I'm not going to say I'm going. I know it's in the. You're going to look up the address. You're not going to identify the location of a WPS because it's in a business district. You're going to look it up. So to me, it didn't make sense to have the business districts there, um, and the waterfront district too. I, 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 I think um, city facilities because we everybody's been stopped on the street and walking their pet or whatever, and people say, "Where's?" Um, this soccer field, or where's this? You know, where's the pool? Where, or to find a post office, something like that. But to me, the, all the all the business districts and even city center, we don't really have one. I think if we had um, community center, um, you know, library pool, I. I but I I take out all those uh, those districts. My two cents. Others. Sure. I'm in total agreement, Jim. That's why I wanted to list out the destinations. If, to me, if it doesn't show up on Google Maps or MapQuest or one of those things, um, then I have no reinforcement for it because I think a lot of people today will start with that, and then as we're driving in towards the city, we look for the signage as, as a re reinforcement. And um, even as a citizen and somebody that's been on the plan commission for a long time, I couldn't really tell you exactly where the waterfront district started and stopped without going back and looking at our maps, et cetera. So it, uh, those kinds of things don't mean anything to me. Same with the city center that Jim just mentioned. City hall would, community center, words like that um, would make more sense, but these are a reach, I think. I think for simplifying the police and fire departments, I don't think departments is needed and that could cut down on text and readability just police fire those are a couple of opinions if folks feel the same different I agree with that because I don't think anyone is going to define the different business districts I mean even even we, we have the plan commission use these for various purposes and in, in doing our planning but people seeking to find the districts aren't going to be concerned about that and they're not going to be knowledgeable about it I agree the major city facilities City Hall the library possibly the schools should be uh, singled out and uh, destinations such as the Huska Park which is sought out by a lot of people uh, that those are appropriate and I also agree that there probably ought to be one sign, either off of Monona Drive or off of Broadway, indicating the preferred route to, to, for cars to get to the particular facility that's being highlighted. Question I had, if there would be something missing, are the bike lanes going to be totally separate signage? You mean the bike route? Yeah. Yes, they're already signed. Thanks. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Brian? Um, the, the piece I want to comment on the, the district piece and the three districts, I'm not necessarily in favor of pointing in which direction a district might be. Um, if, if we find it useful to identify districts of where you are at for a branding purpose rather than a wayfinding purpose, then that was incorporated in, into this. I could see usefulness to that if the intention is to to use this as an opportunity to really highlight what district are you in and to promote those as um, just branding opportunities so not giving you a direction to it but saying where you are when it comes to some of the individual places of where we want to go some of these are confusing to me of why they would even be listed and others are confusing of the way that they were combined so even just leaving it at well city facilities and different things I, I still think there's some confusion and I'll, I'll try to kind of just highlight the top ones mm -hmm. 
now it's quicker. It's, it's not happening as quick as it did in my mind here. Um, God, welcome to my world. <laughs> uh, number 12, like that one, I, I figured people are coming out on Owen. This is not a, a place that people would be an artery going out, so I don't see the use for that sign. Just a, um, we have Delete number 14. If people were from out of town, we wouldn't send them this way. We would send them down Nichols. Because mm -hmm. that's the major artery, number 14. Mm -hmm. I think that's getting to, to Sharon's point, mm -hmm. is we don't want to send anybody that way. Um, if I get to 18, unless I missed it, I don't believe Stonebridge is a beach. So I understand wanting to lump Schluter and Stonebridge, but by doing that, it indicates they're both beaches and they're not both beaches. We have... Um, Can I pause yeah. there for a second? Yeah. Is that important? Is, is identifying Stonebridge important? And what are the purposes of the wayfinding? It is to help somebody who's not familiar with the community find their way around. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what destination somebody from outside the community would have to know that that's Stonebridge? That's where the yacht club, uh, okay. that's where they sail, the sailing club sails from, so there are a lot of visitors to that part. So that is a, a lot of visit, a lot of people yes. from out, outside the community. Do they store their um, craft there so they already know, or do they, they don't, they can't load and unload there? They do load and unload there. They do. And okay. people that don't own those boats get on the boats there. Visitors and okay. such. Okay, thank you. Sorry, Brian. No, nope, that, that helps. Um, uh, slide 23. Um, I think the city center and pool were lumped together there, but I think we really would want to indicate to go left. And some of this is then parking when you get to a place, and that's gonna come up in another one when I get to the school entrance, because it's forcing people to the back entrance, which is fine if that's what we intend to do. Um, like this slide would indicate that you want to park for the pool on the community center side, not the skate park tennis court side. And I'm not sure if that's what we want to do by lumping people together. Um, I'm not sure, like on this 23, why we would be sending people to the golf course from here. If people were in the community, in, inside Monona this deep, that means they're from here and they know the course is there. If they're going to the course not from here, I don't know if they would hit this sign before when they need it. Um, um, 24, this is the one that got me a little confused of where I was being sent for the school. Because for many school functions, for example, if you want to pick up or drop off your kid to or from school, you're not allowed to go in the back lot. Because that's where all the bus traffic is. They force you to go into the, to the top lot. I don't know how it works with this plan about how do we want to do that, but that's just a piece that might battle their problems as well. The, uh, good. Somebody from school reviewed? No, they haven't, but the idea there is there's a lot of events, uh, athletic events at the school, and this is where you would enter from. The people that would be generally utilizing the school for school purposes would know where to take their children. People coming in from out of town would utilize this side of the school entrance. And, and that uh, that makes sense to me hearing it. I would, I would agree. Um, these were just my first comments after looking through the first time. Before we leave 24, would, um, what about the softball diamonds? Would you identify those here? Can I make a comment? Yes. Um, one of the other things that we need to watch, and that's a good example, Gianna, um, 
would be the fact that once you arrive at this destination that it's signed and so perhaps when you would arrive at at that area it would there would be smaller signs underneath saying that the softball diamonds and it would tell you what's there once you have arrived so if you're going to forget what this particular sign said Winnequa school or Winnequa park or whatever it might it might tell you but you know again if we're if we're sending somebody there they need to know via a sign that now you're at I'm not saying to say that but it has to say Winnequa school or whatever at that entry or at that turn <clears throat> one of the pieces that jumped out at me with slide 31 was uh, I think what Sharon's point earlier was is what are the destinations and how do we make sure that there's consistency amongst all the signs to get you there so this was one of the only ones that indicated fireman's park and when I think of some of the parks from people outside of town that they would need to be giving directions to I think of the three places that are, have or are getting shelters built there so people are from out of town are going to be coming to Firemen's. They're going to need to know how to get off the drive to get there. People are going to know how to get to the Dream Park one as well as the Night Park. Um, some of the other ones are less important unless there's a vet space that takes place there. And I think I have almost done. That was all my first so. Any other feedback, comments? Mr. Omberg, any comments? Uh, sure. Um, I, I'll take a step back first. I, I'm thrilled that we're looking at wayfaring signage, and it's clear that staff's put a ton of time and effort into this to have something to review. It, it's always good to have extra eyes look at it, but I, I'm very thankful we're doing it, taking a look at it. And I suspect when we do hire a sign company or consultant, they might have somewhat similar input and say, you know, this, this is not what we normally do or this might be. So I'm, I'm thrilled. I think it's overwhelming to try to put a signage package this thorough in place at once, but I, I think this is an awesome start to it. Thank you. A question with the park signage. How is it decided? Are all the parks listed in the wayfinding? Because um, I know, I think like Bridge Park, I don't think I saw one for that. How is it decided? what parks and then Frostwoods Beach Park is on there and like how is that decided <coughs> as to which parks would deem wayfinding? We um, decided on the parks based on parks that were destinations for people outside the community and uh, those were the ones that staff believed were the outside destinations. And then a quick question with uh, the schools, Nuestro Mundo. Um, is like I know there's a Catholic school as well. Um, how is it decided that it was Nuestro Mundo a public school? I don't know how that's operated. It is. It's a it's a it's a public school operated by the Madison School District that has a contract with Nona Grove to school district to utilize the facility just um, public schools yes okay I mean it's probably not a bad idea to um, also mm -hmm. um, you know to locate the, the private school in IHM there's soccer games and things like that behind IHM too mm -hmm. so people from outside and that would be easy to do off the drive mm -hmm. any other feedback no not at this time Sure. One other thing to remember also is it appears to me that most of the signs are telling us maybe how to come off of uh, the belt line to get to a location, but what are those? What about the people that are uh, starting up here in Madison somewhere, somewhere on the east side or coming down Cottage Grove Road or any of those areas? Um, I don't see any signs on Monona Drive coming in that direction towards the high school or the golf course or the other areas that we might decide should be destinations. Anything else, Sharon? Um, when we're talking to vendors, um, are we asking them for the design of the elements plus the verbiage that's going to be on the signs plus the planning of them or just a price on the signs themselves or? Um, sign materials and design. Um, 
the planning was to be done internally. So just the, the piece itself? Yeah. Okay. Then, Chris, I don't think they're going to give comments on whatever it is. We're going to determine that package, and they're going to give us their bid price on that. Anything else, Sharon? Um, no, I don't, um, I don't know if, if we should have a small committee that's just formed to develop this a little bit further or exactly what, because um, I think it needs some work. I, I appreciate all the work that's been done on it, but um, I just think we're missing, missing some things, or maybe we have too many things in another area. Thank you. Mr. Ganser, Mr. Dorsch. Any comments? No, I have no, no further comments. Yeah. Um, I think I'm just going to wait. Um, we'd be here all night if I yeah. started to discuss this in detail. And, and that's not a reflection on what was put together. I mean, you did a great, great job. These things are extremely difficult to get started on. Um, but uh, budget is going to have a tremendous influence on what ends up on the sign. Um, these are very, very difficult to make effective, uh, to, to bring the function and the aesthetics together in municipal wayfinding is very, very difficult. For whatever it's worth, the number one item uh, to find in a municipality are schools. They are absolutely the top pri priority for people coming from outside the community, and that's primarily because of youth athletics and activities. Um, uh, the, the municipal center would be second, and with the exception of maybe some major parks like Winnequa uh, and Firemen's, um, those tend to, to fall off in the end. But there's so many things that need to come together. I mean, we're, we're showing out of scale drawings and, and you know, they're located in a, in a, in a terrace that's two feet wide and, and um, to make some of this information visible, you're looking at, you know, four foot wide signs, which, which isn't gonna fly. And that's what I'm saying, the, the design and the function and the budget come together in a very precarious way but it's very challenging and, and so um, for me to have input I, I just need to s would need to study it for quite a bit actually. Okay. Um, anybody else? I, go ahead. I just wanted to um, say I agree with Brian's comment, well most of them, but the one in particular that if we have an opportunity to brand districts, I don't think that's a bad idea. I, I think that's to start cool. calling it, if, if there's enough room, well, we're trying to get too much information, but if there's enough room to say you're in the waterfront district or you're the no drive business district, I think that's a great way to brand the city and, and add a little character to it, if we can, if, if there's room for it. Maybe not wayfaring, wayfaring signage to get there, but once you're there, you've entered, you're in this district, and then some of the businesses can start identifying with that. Say, you know, I'm Pier 37 down in the waterfront district. It's kind of a neat way to do it if it's possible, if there's enough room on the signs. So I, I'm not opposed to the districts out there. The um, comment I was going to have when we go back to the uh, park signage. Should we, if we're thinking about branding, do we have a common theme, um, be it the logo or, not that logo, but you know what I mean, the, 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 the waves and the, and, the, and the bird. You know, I think that seems to be our logo that we use the most. And is there a way of incorporating something like that here so that it, we're tying everything together, wayfinding parks, everything? Yeah, that would be, yeah. that would be a, an element of the design that we would, insist on that the um, that the logo be on there and the colors and potentially some sort of sale concept what's up there is is just you know first stab at it with uh, mm -hmm. with something other communities have done but the, we envision having the logo and our colors incorporated if you come down Monona Drive we've got we don't necessarily on Broadway we've got the double-sided banners 
and I'm going to want to drive. We've got single sided. Is it is it a thought that maybe we could put these opposite those single sided banners so we're not adding a new pole to the streetscape using something that's existing um, wherever possible if we could do that and and have a kind of tie in yet still be functional. Yes, the previous the existing signs are all tied to either light poles or some other sort of mm -hmm. pole and that's what we would envision where we could do it. Okay. Any other feedback, Sharon? Yeah, I just wanted to tie into what Chris was saying about identifying areas because I had a similar thought. Um, I don't know that in identifying uh, the districts that they necessarily have to be on the signs, but they could be some other element. It could be the shape of the sign. It could be replacing some of the banners that we already have, similar that go up and down Monona Drive. And because I, I want to make sure that those aren't confusing with what's happening here too. I mean, we're going to see a picture of the gazebo, but then I don't know how that relates back here because now here's a different design element. So, but maybe you drive down an area and it's the waterfront district and maybe there's banners and those happen to repeat and say waterfront district or whatever it might be. Um, and then you still have these signs, so they tie together in color or maybe the colors are different because they're different areas or whatever. I mean, there's lots of good ways to be able to do that in addition. Oh. Thank you. Anything else? I think we're good. Thank you so much. I know this is another easy project in everybody's yes. spare time, <laughs> but I appreciate it. Um, go back to 6D, consideration of action on request by Jacob Anderson, Illinois Park Recreation Director for approval of one new land sign at each of the following locations on Ida Park, Arrowhead. And Mr. Bussey, yes. I am I am quiet during this. All right. Yes, please. First, my apologies. As many times as I've been here, you think I know what time the meeting started, but I had 7:30 on my calendar. Um, here before you tonight for uh, hopefully approval of replacement of existing park signs with uh, park signs that are very similar to what we have in the community at Fireman's Park, most notably in the recent uh, past, community center, city hall, um, keeping with a consistent theme throughout the community. Um, Graham Park, as you see in your packet, is a strict replacement of the sign in its current location, keeping its current landscaping. Uh, that setback is roughly 25, 26 feet from the curb got very nice landscaping that members of our Monona Garden Club maintain and is one of our uh, niche lakefront parks. Um, want to go one by one or just through them all? Whatever you want to do. Okay. Maybe the one that, um, there's, there's one that you're asking for sure. on. You might focus on that one. Sure. Wildhaven Park, mm -hmm. uh, fairly dramatic change in scenery in Wildhaven Park this past year with the stormwater uh, replacement in the road there. So the top sign is of what it was existing. You can see the, you know, the bad curb there that was replaced, curb and gutter and stormwater in fall. Um, the way the park is sloped, it's high at the street side and slopes back. So the existing sign was roughly uh, eight feet from the curb. Uh, it's kind of sandwiched between an electrical, underground electrical that runs through uh, the back side of it and on the front side of it is a gas line that runs through. Uh, as we went through construction, we actually did take out one tree uh, that was kind of to the right of it. And now I would prefer to keep the new sign in the same spot as you can see kind of at the edge of the mulch on the lower picture, that mulch line extends to 10 feet. So at that back of that uh, mulch line, it has a pretty significant drop in grade right there. And we get closer to uh, the existing tree that's there where I, I don't know how much visibility we really get. At, at 15 feet, we're at a tree. So where that base of that tree is is 15 feet from the curb. So that's why I'd be asking for a variance to uh, replace the 
existing sign and keep it keep the new sign in its old location. Thanks. Why don't you hang there for questions, Sonia? So plan commission review of landscape ground signs is required, so that's why this item is here. And approval is recommended for all four signs. And the finding of fact that's listed is in regard specifically to that Wild Haven sign variance. Comments? Well, on Wild Haven, I actually pulled into uh, Goss driveway to check out, see how that sign would be. And then really, I can't see the sign because there's so much brush right by their corner. So you, you actually bark, bark edge and bark mulch right around down in here. Correct. And the brush is right here. It looks almost like it's on their property, but you might have edged past it, or is that on our property? I think it's in the right way. The thing I noticed is I, I think that brush that's there, it's right tight to the curb and it's scraggly old junk. That, that what I noticed that should be taken out and they'd have a lot better vision than they do now and I don't see the sign being an issue there but what I noticed was that brush and it was ours to take out you edged around it yes we did as of tonight it was edged around it and bark mulch around that there's just might have been the property owner. Right here. the property owner asked us to continue our um, our mulch line in his property it and I it's our right away regardless the client that, that if he wanted to do that he could oh, okay. do that but yeah it's it's, it's right there I, yeah that'd be my only comment on that sign location is the brush is what gets it in other driveway oh here there there's all kinds of brush right tight to the curb line so it what i'm getting at is the sign is not a vision impediment to any of the vehicles pulling out and there's no intersection there so only person could possibly affect would be the two property owners on either side and right now the brush and the stuff around there is much more of an impediment to the sign at all and the sign looking at where the existing sign is coming out of goss driveway it's not an issue for me you know yeah. I think the signs look great. I, I like the consistency. I appreciate how you know you've got a nice looking sign and you've used it well through all of these. I think they're they're super. Thank you. Doesn't Fireman's have the city logo on it somewhere? somewhere? No. I, I think it says city. No, it doesn't say city on it. It's like one of the park fireman's park shelter. And then does does Schluter have something like that, or, or am I just imagining it? Schluter actually has a statement of the history underneath a brief statement that it was found that it was named after George Schluter, yeah. who died in the yeah. war <laughs> okay. uh, just looking at the landscape um, which way would the sign be facing and well the annuals in front I assume correct um, just, I noticed you have red flame black grass going across the back which I guess it would provide the deal at least behind it's going to completely block that out because they're going to get four feet tall about the so day lilies or the red flame grass the flame grass will get yeah about I've four feet tall and yeah. then there's deal lilies behind them um well, yeah behind actually in front of them if you were looking at the back side of the so the day lilies would be that's oh, for the back down, okay. yeah down over actually Have anything else, sir? No, thank you. Primer? Question, Jake, on Oneida Park. Since yeah. you're redoing all this, the one thing that struck me when I drove up there is how far away that sign is. I know you've got a little landscape around, but if I were going to put a new sign in, I'd get that thing about 10 feet Eight close feet? to the road. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's 26 or something. It is. There, right? it is. I think it's about 10 foot close. Just, just when you're coming up there, it's off in the distance as you're driving up. You don't really notice that sign. And it's a great sign. I know you have these trees kind of in a semi-circle mm -hmm. behind it. You're already set off from those. So, so to be a little further set off, to me, coming up to the park, I would notice it. And there's no driveways. There's no intersection. So there, there's no obstructions visually whatsoever. And, and it would actually be a little more noticeable. And they're gorgeous signs. I, I, to me, I, I, when you're doing it, you have to relocate some landscaping. But yeah, you're only going to do this right. once for a while. So. Right. No, I It's would, just a suggestion. No, I, if allowable, I would certainly move it up closer if we could. So We'd actually looked at, I tinkered with maybe a second location for the park coming off the Ponset, but I, I think you can tell by driving down <laughs> the Kumsa that it's a park and you're there, so it's not needed as much as right at that corner as you're coming into it. Are you asking about the setback distance? Yeah. If you move it 10 feet closer, it's still 16 feet off the curb. Oh yeah. So. 
I wouldn't have any issue. Okay. Any other feedback? Requests for action on approval. Is there a motion? Move approval with uh, finding a fact and the condition that it's written by staff. So second. Second. All those in favor? Further discussion done. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Jay. Um, moving on to item 7A, review of on to review Sandy's business. Review of comprehensive plan public input survey on the grants of the agricultural, natural, and cultural resources element of the comprehensive plan. So, so there are two separate items um, related to the comprehensive plan here for review doesn't make any difference to me which one we start with um, so I'll just go over them both briefly the element number five um, again the changes were mostly in formatting and just providing a little bit more background on each of the various elements that are a part of this chapter like groundwater watersheds and surface waters, floodplains, wetlands, all of those things that are listed under natural resources. This element is very much an inventory, and then it references some of the other plans that are related that have more specific um, guidelines, such as the Parks and Open Space Plan, which is currently being updated as well. Um, I think the goals have largely remained the same as they were in the 2004 element with a few things that were removed um, such as goals that were accomplished by the landmarks commission when they updated their book and, and a couple of other things and then the survey is um, open for comments this is just a first um, take on some possible questions that could be asked of the public in order to get input on the various topics. We have housing, transportation, um, land use and economic development, and then within there some questions related to specific sites that have been um, cited as areas that are um, for redevelopment and goals in our various redevelopment area plans. So those areas are um, across from the high school. It's in redevelopment area number seven. Um, some input on the waterfront redevelopment initi initiative that the city's been working on for the past year between Bridge Road, Broadway, and the Ahara River. Um, the chief auto parts site, as well as the more north end of redevelopment area number seven, where the former Coles Grocery and Rubens Furniture site is. And then a couple of questions specifically related to future development on Monona Drive. Um, some community character branding and sense of place questions that we might be able to um, use in further developing Monona Drive as a business district or um, continue developing our branding as a community. Um, let's see, and then just wrapping up some demogra demographic questions so we know who's responding to the survey. And then finally, some questions that aren't really refined, but topics on natural and cultural resources, sustainability, and utilities and community facilities. Those um, questions on those topics were not listed in the rest of the survey, so if there are any specific questions that we want to learn in those topics, it might be worth developing a couple of questions in those areas. Thank you. Are you going to start with the um, element five or with the survey? Whichever you prefer. Just stay on one or the other, shouldn't we? Let's start, let's start with five and then go okay. to the survey last. I just had a couple minor comments on that. On page two, it talks about the Har River going from approximately 800 foot wide at the widest 100 foot at the narrowest. It must be much less than 100 feet in front of the Yacht Club in Bourbon Street. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure this is probably the former one, but looking at it, I know it's not 100 feet across there. Okay, I'll check. So I just at least take a look at it because to me, that New York is the narrowest. Um, give me a second. On page eight, under item two, yeah. Encouraging environmentally sustainable measures on and on and on. The, the very last part it says, it encourage quality mixed use urban infill 
infill redevelopment. To me, I think we should call it and encourage quality urban infill redevelopments. In, in our zoning court, our ordinance, everywhere else we talk about what's appropriate where, mm -hmm. and this, this is for the goal, a broader goal, and I think our broader goal is to encourage the quality urban infill redevelopments, and where it's at might suggest whether it's a mixed use or purely commercial or purely residential. We just want quality infill. So for me, that would be important. Uh, K, I, I'd like to expand that and somehow address ash tree board, because we have a lot of ash trees in Monona, and something we should be looking at as a commission is 10 years down the road, 20 years down the road, what does that do to the trees in the city? So somehow if we could come up with some uh, policy or objective to address the emerald ash borer, because I know a lot of municipalities have and we, we're going to have to do it. And perhaps you have something in motion or APAD, I don't know, but it would be appropriate in a long-term plan. Yeah, we do. Um, I guess we don't have a policy statement, but we do have a budgeted item as to, you know, we need to take them down and replace them, but yeah. it's not a policy statement. Okay, and, and that might just be just another thing to mention in there because it is a major issue to most municipalities. Um, M, you talk about maintaining cooperative relationships with groups, including, period. Oops. Yeah. And I think that is it for me on this. Page three underneath five two seven for force. I'm not sure if this was a typo or if I just missed it, but it had to do with uh, that we were a tree city for nine, like 2003 and did it end or am I missing something? It's highlighted because I need to check on the end oh. date. Jake, maybe you know um, when is our most recent designation as Tree City USA? Four. Okay. Yeah, I think it's one year behind. No, we would have gotten it 2014, so, yeah. because it was this year. So maybe to replace it to current, for, yeah. if that's appropriate. On uh, page four, I just wanted to verify, and um, it may have just slipped past me, uh, the parks and open space, open space plan, I know it's been a draft for many it's, it was in draft format for a while, and I wanted to verify that it was adopted. Not by council, it's gotta come here. Okay, so. Um, we'll make sure it's adopted before this is okay. adopted. All right, so I just want consistency. Perfect, I'll sign it. On the right side of the, that image, it talks about basketball hoops, and I think we might wanna change that to courts. I'm not sure what it would be. Uh, the more appropriate language. Down towards uh, 531, the last sentence. It seems like it's either two separate sentences or there's missing a word. It talks about from the early 30s and 40s, many whole Chuck family set up camps along the shores of, the, of Mud Lake and Winona's wetlands, sold handmade products to tourists. So it's either two separate sentences or there's something that's missing. It just jumped out at me. Um, 55. Number 17, I think it's this Royal Airport, not Royal Airport Mound, I believe. I think um, where is that listed? Number 17 at the bottom. Yep. Thanks. And 533 on, on page 6 and page 7. I love this section. Um, the, the piece that kind of jumped out at me was this idea that talking about, well, there is some things that we may apply. Um, I, I wouldn't want any may <laughs> in here. I would want either declarative, either we are or we aren't. Um, so by the time we get to this point, we want to have a direction of what we are going to do and have that listed rather than what we might do. Mm -hmm. Uh, regarding the goals, two J and K. Uh, Can we yeah. let's stick on the section on the goals? Is that oh, okay? sure. Any, anything else? On? Now we're going to move on to goals. So two J and K that had to do with the forest management and the tree stock. I think um, 
speaking to all, uh, Commissioner Hambert's point of addressing that, I think can be addressed in both those areas. But it, I think it's a, a clear thing to link those two together. That there's a management plan, but there's also a clear inventory of what's where and where it's at in the progression of being removed and replaced if needed. Um, so maybe those two could actually be lumped together rather than separate. Okay. And that was it. First one's overall, and I hate to even throw it out because it's not constructive. But it, when I read through it, it seemed just disjointed, and I'm not sure why it did to me. And I, 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 I hate to say it while having constructive, or where, I, where I think we can change it or how, but it, it, I, I, it I guess it just seemed like a random assemblage of questions that I, I think the average citizen is going to look like, and they'll maybe get part way through, and maybe they won't. In particular, um, transportation page two two e. We talk about whether you agree or disagree that what we've done on Monona Drive should be duplicated where appropriate. Well, we have nowhere we can duplicate Monona Drive. I mean, there's neat things we've done. Some of the amenities can be duplicated, but Monona Drive can't. We don't have a right of way that big. We don't have the ability to do what we've done on Monona Drive anywhere else in Monona. I guess you could argue Broadway, but Broadway's all been rebuilt. So uh, that, that would confuse me if, if I saw that and I was just trying to fill this out. Uh, I think on the very next page at the top, if new commercial uses are developed, what type would you like to see? Everyone's going to want a craft brewery, a mom and pop, but we all know we, c we can't mandate that. We're, so so I I'm not sure what good it's going to do for everybody to say they want independently owned retail business and a craft brewery and, and that because is that something we can mandate through our, through our plan? I encourage it. Jim, if I could yeah. answer that. <coughs> We also use these tools when we meet with potential developers and interested parties. Yeah, so I, I don't say. think it would hurt to okay. have that in there. There's been several um, interested developers, um, business owners that have said, you know, uh, we'd like to do something here, but what does your community think of this type of use? I don't think it would hurt to say, well, we have a couple surveys that stated they'd like to see this type of thing. Yeah, I, I agree. I just, I, I, I'm, I'm probably jaded. I think I already know what all the answers are going to be. I don't yeah. think too many people are going to check. Well, I want more big box retailers and I want more fast food restaurants. Yet they all go to them all. It seems like so. It, it's just, it seems like it's set up for failure for certain segments. Um, on, on six, we're. Uh, I know we're looking at it right now. So I, so I guess for right now, I'm, I'm thinking comprehensive plan, and you're thinking comprehensive plan and information and feedback you want right now okay so I had that one marked it's like one particular site but that one's being looked at right now so that might be the reason for that because there's a lot of sites in Monona that we could ask that very same question about and um, on page six at the very end should the fire station be moved from its current location is there enough information out there for the public to even know that that's being considered or is that just kind of a question out left field to most people it, it's just under other possible questions or topics as something that could be touched on if we needed more information on it if you felt that that was an appropriate question that we needed more feedback on from the public it would be worded in a different yeah. way something to address community facilities uh, I try to stay pretty informed and I don't think I have enough information personally right now to comment on that so I'm, I'm wondering how general public Maybe there's something I missed. Thank you. Other feedback? No comment. So some of the other elements that were um, a little bit more challenging, we did a first blush and then we did a second. Um, I think the element five, unless other people have other pieces, I think kind of make some changes and move forward. The um, community survey, I think I want a little bit more time to kind of think about it mm -hmm. so I can give uh, more thorough feedback on it. I think it, I don't think I'd be prepared to give you enough to move forward and go, oh, okay, now we can move on. Okay. Is my opinion. But Could be a pretty valuable piece, mm -hmm. the survey. Any 
So, so that I have enough information to revise the survey moving forward and bring it back. Um, comments so far, one, make it maybe flow a little bit better so that the person that's participating can um, follow a logical... Right. Okay. Um, any specific topics that you want more questions on or that you felt we are lacking information on that should be expanded? No? <laughs> well, some of it in the sustainability, uh, you know, Mixed and there's can we make it more of one maintenance of existing parks and open spaces? That to me doesn't add to sustainability in my mind. And then improve improve the water quality of the Hare River. I don't know. And improve the water quality of Lake Monona. That's I mean we have to be part of the solution, but there's no way it's gonna be be able to solve those issues. Phosphorus might be something to, to throw in there to see if folks have a stomach for something like that. Um, some of the other things are there. Mr. Under. Well, you know, I'm with you on some of those questions. We all know what the answers will be. I, I doubt anyone in this community doesn't want to improve water quality if they can. Uh, but there's a cost and, and there's an impact on everything we do and, and, and so to have a survey and say 90% of the community, because somebody's going to say no, wants to improve water quality, I, 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 I'd be shocked if we didn't have the community saying that. So I've got to go back to Alder Holmquist. I, I know you want to get the survey out right away and I appreciate that, but I think I'd like to think about this and you know we just got it Thursday night and, and think about what I think might be good questions instead of picking on what's already there because there's a lot of really thoughtful stuff in there but I think for all of us to think about it and bring it back at the next meeting might be valuable if that's enough time for you and then say here, here we thought about we discussed it a little bit let's think about it talk to our neighbors what they think and then what are the hot button topics and, and, and maybe we can then all come back with a few suggestions and and without making it too long make it something that would get to the meat of some of the things we don't know. Yes. We know everybody wants water quality, but mm -hmm. maybe there, we can come up with some questions that actually we don't know what the answers are. I, I love those kind of questions. Yes, I agree 100%, and this is just a very first rough draft, and I hope that you might come back with um, questions that you've written yourself that you would suggest um, for the survey, or areas where we don't know what the answer is, or areas where we can take the answers to developers or to um, when a sensitive issue comes up in the future, we might have some public input information that can help answer questions that we're looking at in the future. Well, so. well it worked because you got us talking and thinking. <laughs> would, would, it, would it make sense to email thoughts to you before, or should we just wait till the next meeting and have a discussion? Might be better just to have the discussion at the meeting because it, it might, might, one comment might stimulate another. Right. So, okay. All right. We could do a community survey asking them what kind of questions they'd like on a community survey. That was Pat's idea. We are required to update Chapter 2 of the Zoning Code, which is the Shoreland Wetland and Floodplain Zoning Ordinance, by September 17th, um, in order to avoid being sus suspended from FEMA's flood insurance program. So um, the city's consulting engineer at Beerbecker Associates is working on the update right now. It's a pretty simple um, update. There was a model ordinance provided by the DNR that has fill in the blanks and check changes. So Darren is working on that. and. Um, I believe it will have to come to this body at some point for approval because it's part of the zoning code. Um, let's see, Vogel Wood Products is um, an application that was reviewed in a pre-hearing conference last month. And they're working on stormwater plans and they'll be coming back to request approval of their 15,000 square foot addition. Um, Lattice Park is continuing to move through committee review and that'll come back for more plan commission feedback, more detail on stormwater and erosion control. Um, the Royal Capital Group multifamily development on 
East Broadway. Um, they're provided a summary of feedback from the plan commission and are exploring ways um, that they might begin to address the plan commission's concerns and their intent is that they want to try to make some of those drastic changes to change the proposal and come back for more plan commission feedback. Um, so they're working on that right now. Um, do we have updates on the waterfront redevelopment area? Um, Not at this point. Okay. Okay. If I could just add too, <clears throat> we had a new staff person that started today, not directly tied to planning, but with a significant amount of uh, planning background. Um, Shannon Hayden is a Monona resident, started today as our, our project coordinator, basically filled Janine Glazer's position. Um, she'd served as a project manager in the city of Denver and also was the uh, planning director um, for Sheboygan County. So a lot of uh, great knowledge involved with project specific work, but also uh, um, hopefully some ability to, uh, to assist in economic development and planning also. So real good hire. Will Shannon be at the facility meeting this week? Uh, Shannon will be at the meeting Wednesday, yes. Okay. Thank you. Any other news you want to share with the Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. We did receive a. Uh, yeah, by two points. <laughs> um, Jake and I went um, all the way up to Hayward um, last week. Uh, had a very good time at one of the local uh, recreational facilities. <laughs> but we also uh, were the recipients of a uh, five hundred thousand uh, dollar boat access. So uh, a lot of credit. To, to Jake and, and our consultants for putting that together and a uh, great uh, relief for us and, and a lot of good things are going to be happening down at Lattice Park. Cool. Congrats. Thank you. Um, 7C, Planning Commission requests for information concerning development projects. Anybody have anything? Um, I, no, I just wanted to ask, did you say there's no news on the triangle at all? No, there is uh, there is progress on the triangle. Uh, nothing to report publicly yet, though. Yeah. So you have interest. Uh, we have and we have a um, a partner. The city has a partner. We're putting together some uh, uh, legal documents currently, and uh, that's why there's nothing to report. Cool. Hey, anything else? Any other comments? Uh, adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? Move adjournment. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Thanks, everybody.